Ho, ho! Ho! Hello guys! As shit team plays, I'm Fabio Pisco and today I bring you a new video. This time with the testing, the testing, the actual testing of the new AMD Adrenaline 2019 drivers. In this video, I will test indeed the old drivers, the older drivers versus the new ones. So 18.11.2 versus the 18.12.2, which is the Adrenaline 2019 drivers. We have currently the 18.12.3, but I find it, I find it to have more, uh, more bugs than fixes. So I'll stay with these ones. Thanks. In this video, I will also be testing the new overclocking features, which is the auto undervolt and the auto overclock. I won't be testing the auto memory overclock because it is quite useless in my Vega 56. The stock values are 1800 MHz for the HBM2 and if I do the auto memory overclock, it will stay at 1800 MHz, so useless! For the final test, since I am using my Vega 56, which has HBM2 memory, I will also be testing the HBM timing levels. So for Vega cards which have the HBM, uh, HBM2 memory, I don't know if, it's, if it applies to Fury R9 Fury cards, but anyway, we have the timing level 1 and the timing level 2. And I will be testing this um, if, to see if there's actually any difference between both or if it is a useless feature like some others. That's all for today guys, hit like, subscribe and share the video because that really helps a lot, that helps me and helps the channel, so don't forget to share the video. Also, if you, like the, if you liked the, the previous part, the, the first part of the intro, which is me throwing shit up, if you like that, go to the last part of the resume because uh, the conclusion, well, because there is more there. Let's now go to the part that really matters, the hardware testing. See you soon. The first game tested today is Rainbow Six Siege, and as we can see going from Adrenaline 18.11.2 to Adrenaline 2019 which are the 18.12.2 made absolutely no difference in this game, this performance wise of course. Estaré aquí toda la noche. ¡Ey! ¡Cuidado, niños! Now on Shadow of the Tomb Raider, we can see a mild increase in FPS. This happens due to an optimization in the newest drivers that make my Vega 56 maintain higher clocks with the same overclocking settings and the same power draw. Which is quite cool in fact, free performance. <laughs> Our third game is Shadow of War, and once more we see a substantial boost in FPS. This happens again due to what I said before, with these new drivers my Vega 56 will boost higher clocks with the same overclocking settings, so we'll have a bit higher performance. Let's now go to the new features.
Now, with all overclocking settings tested with the three usual resolutions. We can see that on Rainbow Six Siege the manual overclock is still superior, with the auto undervolt feature giving more performance than the auto overclock one. On Shadow of the Tomb Raider, the scenario is exactly the same. This happened due to the power limit of 180 watts for the GPU core, and that is why Auto Undervolt gives better performance. With undervolting, the GPU will be able to boost higher clocks because of the lower power consumption, hence the better results. The results wouldn't be different in Shadow of War, of course, and we can see once more the manual overclocking being way superior, mostly on minimum FPS numbers. This happens due to HBM2 overclocking. Auto memory overclocking wasn't tested because I tried it several times, but the feature would simply change nothing. Let's move on to HBM testing. Now testing the HBM timing levels. As we can see, using level 1 or level 2 made absolutely no difference on Rainbow Six Siege using Vega 56. The same thing applies to Shadow of the Tomb Raider, where the results are virtually the same. We do have a 10 FPS difference on 1% lows at 1080p, but that may be due to, for example, an occasional stutter caused by HDD loading. That is why at 1440p we get close values once more. Shadow of War gave us almost the same results in every possible scenario, which leads us to believe that no one should be bothering with HBM timing levels, at least for gaming. The Fighting Santa! So guys, concluding, are these drivers good? Are these drivers a good uh, uplift from the previous ones or not really? Well, in my opinion, Yes, there are some points that are really good. For example, the on the Vega cards, on the car, on the card I tested on this Vega 56, um, the drivers definitely help the car to maintain higher clocks in certain games. That's why we have uh, that small difference of uh, FPS, like shown in the in the charts, because the the card is able to maintain higher clocks with these newer drivers than the previous ones. In terms of bugs, you can see the bugs that the drivers have in this, um, on this particular page. So the link is in the description. Also, you can see the driver bugs that they have. Um, personally, I found only two bugs, at least for my daily usage, which are the fan curve bug. So for example, if I select a manual fan cur curve, 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 doesn't matter. So if I select manual for the fan, um, I can't have a zero RPM fan, so instead of my, I, of my fans being stopped um, for, for example, for idle usage, for Windows usage, they will be always and always spinning and that is quite annoying, at least for me, because I don't like noise at all. So that's annoying and that was a reason uh, why I, go, I did go back to the previous drivers, but then I found a, a fix, which is leave it at automatic and well i have the zero rpm fans again so it really doesn't matter me uh, doesn't matter to me a lot as for the timing levels we see that the uh, timing levels at least on gaming on these games are completely useless and the values you see are completely within the margin of error so there is no such difference um, there is no difference at all uh, in any game we tested and I tested several others but I didn't put it on the video because I I didn't want um, a long video um, so that's why but there is no actual difference between level 1 and level 2 at least in gaming conclusion well if you can live with some bugs that it has, just upgrade the, the drivers. And the auto undervolt feature is actually nice because undervolting the card will make the, the boosts a little higher and that's why the uh, auto undervolt has higher performance than the auto overclock. The auto overclock will raise the frequency of the card but it will also raise the core voltage which will lead to this problem which is the GPU not boosting enough. Why? Because um, at stock values, even at the auto overclock and auto undervolt, the GPU core 
is locked to the max power usage to the max power draw of 180 watts so if you go high voltage the the power draw will be higher and to maintain that power draw the gpu will have to reduce the frequency so lower um lower performance which is why the auto undervolt actually gives more performance because the because the the voltage is lower so the power draw is also lower and then the gpu can boost higher clocks that's a simple a simple explanation and that's why the auto undervolt is better than the auto overclock in this particular case well to close the topic this video is one day late i didn't feel like recording uh, yesterday i was a bit i don't know i was a bit down i don't really know but i i just didn't want to record but i am doing it today so i really hope you you spent uh, a really good time with your friends and your family in your christmas uh in your christmas days 24 25 and i really do and i really hope you enjoy it anyway don't forget hit like subscribe and share the video if you can because that really really that really that really that really helps a lot thanks a lot for watching one more time Leave a comment on the comment section and let me know what you think about this video and see you in the next one. What on the guy on? How to fuck shit up. How to fuck shit up. <laughs> Merry Christmas.